Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 59 in our incredible tutorial series where you are learning artificial intelligence on the Jetson Nano. I'm going to need you to pour yourself a nice enormous mug of iced coffee. <clears throat> That would be strong black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. I'm also going to need you to get out your Jetson Nano gear. And while you are getting out your Jetson Nano gear, as always, I would like to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great material coming. If you are not helping out yet, think about looking down in the description below. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what we are going to look at today. What we're going to look at is the solution to the homework that I gave you in Lesson 58. And that homework was if I remember correctly, was for you to build a circuit with an LED and to control the brightness of the LED using the Jetson Nano. <clears throat> Did any of you guys get the homework done? Did any of you guys make progress on it? If you looked into it very much, what you see is the way that you control the brightness is you control it with PWM. And so the real assignment in these lessons was to get PWM working on the Jetson Nano. And that is not necessarily all that easy, but I'm going to take you through it today. Did anybody get it? Did anybody get the complete assignment done? All right, let me know in the comments if you got the complete assignment done. But uh, let me just real quickly go in and kind of show you the circuit uh, that we're doing. I'm not going to build it for you step by step because by this time you should be able to build a circuit from a schematic. All right, so I will come down here and I'm not going to use my graphics tablet because this is pretty, uh, pretty easy. The key thing is if you're going to do PWM, you can't use just any GPIO pin. I believe the GPIO pins on the Jetson Nano are pin 32 or pin 33. It's a little easier for us to get to those outside pins. So let's use pin 33. Okay, and that is the GPIO pin on the Nano. Okay, and then as we have found out, these things are not, these GPIO pins are not able to drive an LED. So we're going to have to go through a transistor to step the current up. And to do that, we will have a current limiting resistor of 10K, or that would be 10,000 ohms, 10K ohms. And then we're going to come over to our most excellent PN2222 bipolar junction transistor, also known as the BJT. Okay, and the, the emitter we're going to take right to ground. The collector we are going to take up to the LED, but we will also go through a current limiting resistor of 330 ohms, and we will go through the LED, and then we will go to the Jetson Nano five volts, which I believe is pin two. All right. Now we went over this circuit in the last couple of lessons, so I'm not going to go th through it in painful detail. And you can see that I have already built it here. So we're going to call that good enough. And at this point, you should be able to do that on your own. And if you are not able to do that on your own, then you're hopeless. No, you're not hopeless. You can go back to the last couple of lessons and get caught up on that part of it. All right, we'll get a nice little a nice little view there. And then uh, what we need to do now with the circuit built, if you, you might have your circuit from the last lesson. If you don't have your circuit from the last lesson, pause the video and go ahead and build the circuit. But then after you build the circuit, we will need to go back to our Jetson Nano gear as seen here. And we are going to need to do a tad bit of Windows management. 
that looks good. And the first thing that we're going to have to do is, again, we've gotten a little familiar with GPIO pins as output pins and GPIO pins as input pins. Now we've got to have a special kind of output, which is PWM or pulse width modulation. <clears throat> and the first thing we have to do is, to, in order to just use the GPIO pins, uh, as an input or an output, we can do that in software, just declare them as output or declare them as input. But if we want to use them as a PWM pin, we have to go configure it. And that's what I am going to show you how to do today. You need to search Mr. Google on the term, and you cannot see that very well, can you? Let me see if I can make that bigger so you can see exactly what I am searching on. You want to search on the term configuring the 40 pin expansion header, just like that. And then you see this first result is NVIDIA Jetson Linux Developer Guide Hardware Setup, and it's on docs.nvidia.com. You go there, and you can see again NVIDIA configuring the 40 pin expansion header, and it's part of the NVIDIA Jetson Linux developer guide. I think I've given you enough that you ought to be able to find it from here. All right. Now, what you need to do is you need to get this line of code where you're going to run the, pro the program jetson-io.py. This should this should already be on your Jetson Nano if you are running Jetpack 4.3. So we are going to open up a terminal and we are going to clear out all of this nonsense. All right. And now what we are going to do is we are going to try to run this program just using this command with a sudo. We will copy. We will come over here and we will paste and then we will run it. Okay. And what happens is it doesn't run. It just blinks and it goes away. Now, if that happens to you, what you want to see is you want to see this come up, which allows you to configure what pins do what. No luck for us, but luckily uh, they have this command here. So they say, note, there are known issues which prevent Jetson I.O. from working correctly. And what you need to do is to resolve this issue, you would give this command. And it's sudo find opt NVIDIA Jetson I.O. And then it puts some path stuff in there. And I am going to copy that and then come back over here and paste it, and it goes all the way through the colon. Okay, all the way through the colon, and let's see, it did that. Now let's see if we can run the program. All right. For us, that did not fix it. Maybe it fixed it for you. If that didn't fix it, then uh, try this. Do You have two more commands down here. sudo make directory boot dbt so let's call this up and let's try that so we're going to do a make directory like that it makes the directory and then what we are going to do is this sudo copy right here and we're going to paste and let's see if that works all right it looks like some stuff happened and now I'm going to go and I'm going to try to run the program again. Boom! Okay, it ran. Now, this thing kind of wants to be full screen, and so I'm going to go ahead and make it full screen. All right. I was getting a little worried there. How about you? All right. It would have been really, really nice if that would have worked out of the box. NVIDIA would have been really nice. But thank you for showing us how to fix it. And you guys are great guys over there at NVIDIA. You have been very, very helpful to me. And what I like about NVIDIA, every time I've ever put a question, anytime I put a question on their forum, they always answer it. Okay, and I kind of lost. I kind of lost. This doesn't like to have the window resize, so I'm going to try to run it again. Okay, there it is. And I will just turn the title off. Now I am going to try to, I'm going to live dangerously and try to resize this window without losing, without losing my setup. 
Man, they did not make this easy. Yeah, it was one of those sticky window problems where it decided to make it full screen and then stick there. Darn it. I'm going to try this one more time. Uh, they're trying to make a GUI inside of a terminal window, and that never goes well. Okay, so let's try it one more time. All right, can we see? No, we cannot see, so I will have to make this bigger, and I will have to come over here and turn my title off. I will admit defeat and turn the title off. Okay, so what you can see here is, you see, I don't like it because now it makes me float. I'm usually sitting on the, the, the uh, I'm usually sitting on the uh, title bar, and now I'm just floating, which bothers me immensely. Okay, so what you want to see is here are the 40 pins, and you can see that we're working with pin number 33, and it presently says that pin 33 is unused, and so we want to configure that. So we don't want to comp configure for compatible hardware. We want to configure the 40 pin expansion head. So you go to that second option and click enter. And then what you can see is you can come down and you can turn on PMD PWM0, which would be pin 32, and you can also turn on PWM2, which would be 33. Now the way I'm getting that is hitting the space bar. Okay, so the space bar selects it. And so that looks good. And then let's come back to back. I don't see anything else there that we need to do necessarily. So we will go back. Hopefully we will go back. All right. And now, oh my goodness, it's going to want me to reboot. Okay, to recover, re, to reconfigure the pins, we are going to have to reboot. So reboot, indeed, we will do. Okay, we will reboot. Okay, press any key to reboot the system. Okay, we are going to reboot. All right, I am going to get my title back now, and we're going to take a second and watch that thing reboot. I think we're making excellent progress. The hardest part about this is to get the pins configured. And I showed you how to get that program to run. Guys, I spent three or four days figuring out what I just showed you in two minutes. I hope you appreciate that. I hope you appreciate how easy it is to, for someone to show you how to make something work as opposed to have to spend three days trying to figure out how to get it to work. Okay, I love watching Linux boot. I just really dearly love watching Linux boot. I am not sure why. Got the happy little NVIDIA splash screen. I think that, I think the NVIDIA desktop here, I just really, really like it. I like it a lot. I like that high tech background. I like everything about it. Okay, so we have got that stuff going. And so I am going to have to open a terminal. And then I always, I don't know if you guys know this, but I always make myself a little cheat sheet here, which I am going to look at as we go through this. And I will have to come like this and select that and say enter. And then there are my little helpful commands. I did not get I did not get that save last time so I'm going to have to sort of wing it by memory here but never fear we will get this done because I just did it this morning and so give me just a second here I will have this up here in no time at all. Okay, 
So a lot of this is going to be very similar to what we did before. Okay, it's going to be very similar to what we did before. So the first thing that we are going to need to do is, I'm not going to do this in a program. I'm going to do it from the command line, the Python shell. So I'm going to say Python 3. That'll take us to the shell. And then I need to do the import RPI, big RP, little i, dot gpio all uppercase as gpio you guys should be familiar with this this has been like the last two or three lessons we have done this now we need to do a gpio dot set mode and this is where we tell it what pin diagram we want to use for the Jetson Nano. We want to use the board layout, the board pin diagram, and that means the numbers we use are the numbers that are labeled on the silk screen on the, uh, on the Nano, and that just makes life so much easier. So we say G-P-I-O dot B-O-A-R-D. The case is very important. It's case sensitive, so you do that. Okay, now we are on pin uh, we are on pin 23, we said, so we need to make GPIO, and then we need to do a setup, and then what pin are we on? We are on pin 33, we said, 33, and then that is going to be a GPIO dot, can you guess, it is an output pin. All right, so there we go. That looks good. And now what do we need to do? Let's see, we got it set up as an output. Now we've got to create a PWM object. So I'm going to say my underscore PWM. You can call yours your PWM, or you can call it the great PWM. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm going to call mine my PWM. And it's going to be equal to GPIO dot PWM. And now I've got to tell it a few things. I have got to tell it, I have got to tell it, uh, let's see. I've got to tell it which pin, which is 33, and I've got to tell it how fast to go, what frequency I want to go at. I like to go at about 100 hertz. So that means one cycle, it's going to do one cycle of PWM. It's going to do 100 cycles of PWM every second. So one cycle would be 1 100th of a second. And that is the full cycle. Now, how much of that is on or how much of that is off, we can slide around. But the core time unit is going to be 1 100th of a second, which is 10 milliseconds. So, wow, it like that command. That makes me happy. Now I'm going to say my... PWM and I am going to uh, I'm going to dot start it and now I've got to tell it what percent duty cycle do I want well let's give it a five percent duty cycle like that and now we are going to hold our breath and we are going to hit the enter ah boom look at that dim LED shazam look at that wow that is very dim. Let's see now. How would I change it? Okay. I would say my, I wouldn't say start again because it's already started. So what I would do is my PWM dot change duty cycle. I'm going to change it to 1%. Okay. This should be like really dim. Boom. Look at that barely lit. How about if we did like 99%? Boom, full brightness. Do you guys see that? We are controlling the brightness of an LED from the Python shell. <laughs> I, I am really excited about this. This is so easy to do in Arduino, but this was so hard to do on the Nano. I'm very proud. I actually tried this like a year ago and it's only now that I'm finally figuring out how to get this PWM stuff to work. Okay, so let's see what else we can do. Let's see what else we can do. We can also change the frequency. Okay, so I could do my PWM dot change frequency and I'm not sure there's only a limited range of frequencies we can use, but let's see if we can do 500. If it breaks, it will know that we didn't do good. Okay, that, oh, that caused a crash. Okay, so let's do a 
change frequency back to 100 and let's see if it likes that okay and now uh, okay now we have it at 100 let's see if we could go 200 doesn't like 200 let's see if we could go 150 does not like 150 This is acting a little bit strange. I would think that we could do a little bit. It likes 100. It kind of likes 100. Let's see if it likes 120. Does not like 120. Maybe, I wonder if 100 is as high as it'll go, or if it's like only 100 it will do. Okay, it'll go 90. It will go 80 hertz. But it looks like it will not go above 100. Let's say 101. Nope, doesn't like that. So let's go back to 100. All right. Now, uh, did not like 100. Now that is a little bit strange. It should like 100. Okay, let's go all, let's do a, let's, let's just start over. Okay. Let's start over. I think we've got it confused here. So I am going to do a GPIO dot clean up like that. Okay. That change frequency thing is a little bit of a tricky thing to do. And so now we're going to import the library again just to make sure that we can import it. And I'm just hitting the up key so you know what I'm doing. I'm going to import that library. And then I am going to do my board setups, uh, set board. And then I am going to set my output pin on 33. To an out. I'm going to create my PWM object. Okay, my PWM. <clears throat> now that is strange. It does not want to go back to a hundred. Okay, this seems to be a little bit of a glitch in the software, and so let's just do a reboot. I kind of had played with this before, uh, but I would suggest set it to the frequency you want and then don't change it. That would be my suggestion. And 100 hertz is really perfectly fine. I told you it took me a year to get this far, but we're able to do what we want. We can set it at 100. I kind of think that once you set it, it won't let you reset it to something faster. It'll let you reset it to something slower. So maybe if we'd started it out, I'm just, I cannot help myself. We're going to play around with this and figure it out. I just, the safe thing would be just do 100 get through the video, move forward. But I'm going to see if I can initially set it to 500 and then I won't change it. But I just want to see if we really have control with that parameter. And I'm kind of hoping I still have those commands in there when I open up my Python shell. So we will say open terminal and then Python 3. Okay, that looks happy. Now we're going to do our import. That looks good. We are going to do a uh, set mode. That looks good. We're going to set pin 33 as an output. And then this 100 is where we set that initial frequency. I can't help it. I'm going to see if I can set it to 500 hertz here. Let me do it. Okay, the old rebooty took care of things. Okay, so now let's see if we can play around. What we can do is we can change those. Uh, we can, I still need to do now a start. I need to start it, right? I created it, but now I need to start. And I'm going to give it a 1% duty cycle. So this should be very, very dim. Okay, now it's very, very dim, but there's no difference in how dim it is between 500 and 100 hertz because that's just changing that time window 
that we're doing PWM in. What matters is what fraction of that time window we're on and off. And 1% of 500 hertz will look exactly the same as 1% of 100 hertz, if that makes sense. Now, we can change that, right? So we can do a... Uh, Not going to change the frequency. No, we went down that path already and got a little burn. Change the duty cycle to 99% and we are full brightness. Giddy up. All right, giddy up. Okay, so you can see that we're doing that, but let's see if we can learn a little bit more about what PWM is actually doing. And we will do that by bringing out the old scope. Okay, do you guys have an oscilloscope? Are you interested in oscilloscopes? Would you like me to do a lesson someday on the oscilloscope? And my oscilloscope is freakishly small here. Let me see if I can take care of that real quick. What happened here that it made that so small? Okay, that is what I want, just like that. And now we'll switch back over here and we'll go like that and boom, that's exactly what we want. Are you guys interested in learning about the oscilloscope? Okay, so you see the oscilloscope this is coming in. This is my probe. Now, you, do you guys remember that you can't just hook up voltmeters to the GPIO pins? They're very, very sensitive to capacitance. And so I am using a low capacitance probe and I am flipping this little switch to where it says where it actually attenuates. It attenuates it further. So I am using this little switch that further attenuates the capacitance. So I am going to hook, uh, let's see, where would I hook this up to see this? We would go on pin 33, which is coming over here. Like that is pin 33. And then we need to hook to ground. And this is turning out, I'm going to get another wire because I don't want to short this thing out. But the wire, the collector is grounded. And so I'm just going to grab the ground off of the collector. And now the good news is that the light is still working. And now we are going to switch back over to oscilloscope cam. And now we are going to see if we can see this thing on the oscilloscope. And we better give it a more reasonable value. Let's come over back over here and let's give this thing uh, let's give this thing a 50% duty cycle so it would be easier to see okay I think we are gonna get this now now I'll tell you I like I just really should not live so dangerously but let's see if we could come let's see if we could come here and then let's see if I could add that other camera on the fly. Man, I dream of having someone in the control room. You know that? I really dream of having someone in the control room instead of me having to do all this. Okay, there it is. And now I just need to make it a more reasonable size. Okay. So now, look at this. You can see the circuit, you can see the oscilloscope, and you can see our commands all at once, like that. How do you like that? I kind of like it. I like it a lot. Okay, so we set the duty cycle to 50%. And if we look down here at the oscilloscope, you can see that it starts at zero. I'll ground it to show you where zero is. Okay, there's zero. And then I will take a reading. And what you can see is, is that 50% does not mean that I go from 3.3 volts to what would that be like 1.65 volts? No, it's 3.3 volts, but it's on half the time. So you get half the voltage by kind of like the full voltage having it on half the time. Well, let's come over here and let's go back to 1%. Let's go back to 1%. And then what you can see is if you look carefully, you can see that it's barely on there and there. We will go to 20%. 
You guys might not know this, but when you do the analog write on the Arduino, you're not analog writing, you're doing PWM, which is exactly what I'm showing here. So you can see it is on 20% of the time, it is off 80% of the time. And let's see if I can get a little better view there. Move this thing around a little bit. Would you guys like me to teach you how to do the oscilloscope sometime? teach you how to actually run this thing. Okay, so you see there it is up 20% of the time and down 80%. We're going to go here to an 80, and then we're on 80% of the time, and we are off 20% of the time. So this thing is working really good. Now also look at the LED to go along with this. So let's go back to like 10% and watch the LED and watch the PWM signal. LED got dim because the, uh, because the PWM signal is only on 10% of the time. I think PWM is really neat. I think oscilloscopes are really neat, and I have a lot of fun doing this. Okay, let's just see if we can change the frequency now. I know we said we weren't going to, but let's just see what happens. So let's go back, and I am at, what was I at? Uh, I was at 500 hertz. Okay, so now I'm going to go to 250 hertz. Now the duty cycle should stay. Uh, the duty cycle should stay at 50 percent. But let me show you here. I'm going to show you. You see how you see a lot of these here? Okay, so I'm showing you more than one cycle. But now I'm going to go from 500 to 100 hertz, which is way slower. And it did not, ah, I did not, I did not do that right. I got to do a change frequency. Okay, so now we're going to try to go from the 500 hertz to, let's go 250 hertz. And what you should see is the ratio should stay the same, but the period should double because the frequency is having, boom, did exactly what we thought it would do. Now, if I go 100, it should back off again like that. One, if I do it to 100 hertz, the period should change again. Yes, the period changed again, and we are still at about 10% on the duty cycle. Okay, now let's go to 50% on the duty cycle. 50% on the duty cycle. Okay, half up, half down. And uh, we've gone all the way to 100 hertz. It seemed like what crashed it last time was if you tried to go back to a higher frequency after going to a lower frequency. So let's check that. So let's see if we can go back to 250. This is what killed it last time, was when we tried to change the frequency to a higher frequency. So let's see what happens. Yep, it killed it. So that is not our problem. That is a bug in the library because they shouldn't give us a change frequency command if it is going to die when you do that. And in order to fix that, you are probably, let's just see if I control D and if I say Python 3, let's see if we can recover just by exiting Python. And let's also do a gpio.clean up like that. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, GPI is O is not defined. All right, so now let's do a, uh, let's start importing those things again. So I'm going to come in and I am going to find that import command. Import. Okay, like that. Now I need to set it to board. Okay, now I need to set it to output. Okay, GPIO output. All right, it doesn't like that, so now I'm going to do a GPIO dot clean up. Okay, now I will try that, setting it to an output again. Does not like that. Let me see if I can create my PWM object. It might be that we crashed at the point that we really need to reboot. Okay, my PWM is 33,100. Let's see if it'll take that. No, it won't. So we kind of like when we crash it, 
Now, what is wrong is that uh, that pin 33 is locked up. So we are going to have to do a sudo reboot now. Now, you see, the problem is you've got to do a cleanup, but the problem is it crashed. And when it crashed, it had not been cleaned up. And so it was left in a locked up state. And even like restarting the program didn't work. So let's see. Hopefully this will work. Do you like my little setup where you see the circuit and you see the oscilloscope at the same time? I think that's pretty cool, especially since I came up with it sort of on the fly. All right, we're watching the boot here. The nice thing is, man, the Linux boots so quickly. This this Jetson really boots quick, and I like that. We'll be back up and running in no time. <clears throat> My little thing is kind of blocking your view of the LED. Okay, so we are back up, and I am going to open a terminal. All right, I'm going to go to Python 3, and then I'm going to load the library, import the library. I am going to do a set it as a board. Now I'm going to see if I can set 33 as an output. Now I am going to create a PWM object. Okay. Now I am going to put it at a 50% duty cycle. Don't change the frequency. Uh, oh, I got. I can do a PWM start here at 50. I believe I can do that. Yes. Boom. Look at that. 50% duty cycle. I can change it to 20% duty cycle. I can change it to 75% duty cycle. And are you seeing it affect the LED as we're doing this? And so I think this is pretty neat. Uh, the other thing you can do, another thing you can do with PWM is you can use it to directly control a servo. All right, you can have it directly be the control signal on a servo. But man, since I've been using these little uh, PCA 9685 boards, I just would really rather talk to this through I2C and then have this control the servos. Because like if you think of what we're doing over here on the most excellent J Jetson Xavier NX where we are controlling two pan tilt servos and both of them have two, uh, both of them uh, both both of the pan tilt brackets have two servos, so there's a total of four servos. We couldn't do that without this little board because there's only two PWM channels. And so I think if you really want to do PWM, you can always do it through one of these little boards. But if you need just a quick and dirty PWM and you don't need more than two pins, you can do it like we just did. All right, guys. I think I've shown you some pretty cool stuff, and this stuff was painful for me to figure out, and hopefully it was easy for you guys to follow me. But you can use the GPIO pins. You can use it to output a signal. You can use it to input a signal, and you can use it to generate PWM, and I just think that is pretty dandy. I hope you guys are having as much fun taking these classes as I am having making these classes. It's a big encouragement for you guys to to tune into these classes, leaving a comment, leave me a thumbs up, share it with other people. If you'd like to hook up with me on Twitter, I am Paul J. McCorder at Twitter. Or if you want to follow me for outside of work things, I am on Facebook as Paul space and Anna space McCorder. Paul and Anna McCorder on Facebook and you can kind of keep track of stuff going on outside of work. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. This is Paul McCorder with TopTechBoy.com and I will talk to you guys later.